Hi there! Today we're going to be talking about two different methods of hand quilting. One of them is going to be a little bit more traditional, like using a hoop or a frame and a more traditional hand quilting thread. And then another one is going to be frameless or hoopless hand quilting, which is a little more Sashiko style or Kampa quilt style. There's a lot of traditions that have a little bit larger stitch the type stitching. I want to show you both of those and when and where I use those in my quilts. Today we're going to be using a few different things. We do have a Q-snap frame. This is the 11 by 11. We also carry a 17 inch here in the store. I will be using my So Fine Thread Gloss, which is great for quilting, great for that handwork, and I'll explain why when we get there. I have pearl cotton. I'm using a bright color, so like a white, to contrast with the dark color, like the dark blue, makes it a little easier to see. You can also match your red color to your quilt. Depends, again, on what you're going for, if you want it to be more visible or you want it to blend in. Guterman Hand Quilting Thread. It is a little bit thicker and it's a coated cotton thread. It glides through the layers of the quilt a little easier. I have two different styles of tulip needles today. I'm going to be using the Quilters in Between number 10 for the more traditional hand quilting. Not my favorite style of hand quilting just because the needles are tiny and I have big hands. For the hoopless or frameless hand quilting, we're going to be using the assorted Sashiko needles again. I like the smaller, like the shorter of the ones in that pack for the stitching. All right, let's, uh, let's get going. All right, so we're going to start with the frame quilting or the hoop quilting. The wooden hoops, like those big, the giant ones are also great. Sizing it to your quilt, depending on what you're doing, is important because you don't want necessarily work with a, I mean, maybe you do want to work with a tiny tiny quilt, tiny hoop on a massive quilt. But for something this size, the 11 is what I have been using. The nice thing about the Q-snap is that it snaps and you can kind of twist it to tighten it. We're gonna get the four edges on. Last time I talked about how this is where you kind of need to be wary of where your pins are sitting because you don't want to snap over a pin and that can be weird. This would be when maybe another option for the stitch basting because the stitches would just go right under the, whatever these are, the holder things. For hand quilting, you don't want it super drum tight. So I'm gonna actually relax this tension just a little bit. You want a little bit of give. I don't know if you can see that. Different people have different thoughts on how much give. This is what I tend to like. I do recommend a thimble. I have a thimble from my, I think it's from my grandma. My mom gave me a bunch of my grandma's old things, so I have some fun things in there. Uh, but you can also use a thimble dot. For this kind of hand quilting, I do tend to go towards a metal thimble just because of the motion that you're doing. I'm going to <laughs> thread my needle first, and then I'm going to use the So Fine Thread Gloss. And I'm just gonna kind of hold it on there and pull it through twice. So fine thread gloss, it's a beeswax blend. Uh, it's natural. This one has the natural scent. It also comes in different scents. And what it does is it's a thread conditioner and it helps smooth the thread. It keeps it from knotting. It keeps it from getting tangled and caught. So I highly recommend it. I'm gonna do a quilter's knot. I'm gonna hold here and I'm gonna wrap probably four, two, three, four times. This is a little bit thinner and I do need this to hold. There it is. I'm gonna tug on it. There's my knot right at the end, if you can see. Now we're ready to start quilting. I'm gonna do some lines parallel to the one that I already did. I did start quilting in the center. I'm gonna start over here and I'm just gonna eyeball going there. You wanna bury that knot, so I'm gonna go in and I'm kinda of going parallel to the fabric, or the quilt sandwich. I'm not going through the back, so I can't feel that needle underneath there. And I'm just gonna come out right on that corner because that's where I'm gonna start. I have that knot now that catches. And this is kind of the trick. You gotta kind of just pop it in. And that sounds funny, but usually it goes right between the threads of the fabric and it doesn't usually leave a mark. That's nice. So now my thread is secured and I can start quilting. With more traditional hand quilting, you're going to go, let's see if we can do this. You're gonna go straight down and I'm feeling with my finger, my index finger underneath and I'm gonna feel till I can feel it poking through and then I'm gonna rock it. And this is why you need a little bit of give in your quilt top because you're gonna rock it and then I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna see that it's there and then I'm gonna go straight back down. It's this kind of 
rocking motion where, and of course, my stitches are nowhere near even. There's a lot better hand quilters out there than I am. You can see that I have like three stitches loaded up and then I'm gonna push it through and pull it. I'm able to do more than one at a time, but the big key is straight down. And then when, once I feel it come through on the underside, pushing it back up again, making it a nice, <laughs> nice and even stitch. That's the part that comes with practice. And because this isn't necessarily my favorite method, I don't practice it quite as much. So my stitches aren't quite as even. This is the thimble dot, the leather thimble dot. Just being able to have something to grip that needle. Ooh, I'm shifting everything, sorry. There we go. And then pulling that through. Again, tiny needles and big fingers. It's frustrating. This is, I guess, the more traditional way of doing it, which is great. I'm taking little bites, feeling it poke through. You will get a little callus on that part of your finger. At least I do. And I'm trying to get these stitches nice and even, as even as possible, just because it creates a nice, I don't know, a little bit nicer look. I mean, you can see some of them are bigger, but that's, that's fine. So I'm gonna try to wrap this line up here. Just remember you're wanting to go straight down into the top. We're gonna say that I'm at the, oop, hello. Oh, I didn't pull my thread, that's why. Uh, the tail of my thread was longer and it got caught. That's also something to be aware of, shifting your thread when you need to. You know, not the prettiest, but it'll work. And now let's say I'm done quilting, so I'm gonna Go in it. I'm gonna do just kind of the reverse of what I did to start. I'm gonna go parallel again. I'm not going through the back and I'm coming up. Now I need to tie it off. Once again, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hold my thread and do two, three, four. So this is the knot to kind of bury that end to secure everything in. Now comes the tricky part. I'm gonna try to go through the exact hole I came up and I'm gonna travel along underneath. Now I have this little knot and I'm just gonna pop it under the surface. Then my little quilting line is done. And on the back, you can see I have the under stitches and that is the frame or hoop quilting method. Now we are ready to do the frameless quilting. Mine tends to be a little bit bigger stitch because of the technique you're using. We're gonna be using pearl cotton and I've already threaded my needle. And this is, it's the shortest of the three lengths in the Sashiko, the assorted pack. And I like it because it is a nice strong needle, but it is super sharp so it goes through the layers of the quilt really easily. But once again, I am going to be using So Fine Thread Gloss because it helps keep everything nice and together. And I just unthreaded my needle. Let's re-thread that. Should be pretty quick. The nice thing about these Sashiko needles is that the eye on this short one is super large. Now we're ready to go. Again, we're going to do a quilter's knot, but because of the thickness of this pearl cotton, we're not going to wrap it like four or five times, like we did with a regular quilting thread. I am only gonna wrap it twice, and that's gonna create a, a knot that is big enough to keep things from coming out, but not big enough that it won't go through the fabric, if that makes sense. Because we have all of these stitches, and so all of these basting points through are keeping the quilt sandwich nice and together, you can really start quilting when you're doing frameless and you have stitch basted, and I would not do this with pin basting, but you can start quilting wherever you want. So you don't necessarily have to start in the middle and work your way out. The other thing is with stitch basting, I can kind of handle the fabric a little differently. I like using a seam to kind of be where I bury my thread at first. Kind of went right next to the seam. And once again, I'm gonna try to pop it in here, if you can see that. I'm pressing down to kind of hold things and it disappears. It went in and it's gone, which is great. I mean, it's not gone, it's still there. Anyway, 
<laughs> now we can start quilting. I'm using my index finger to feel where it's coming from. So I'm kind of manipulating the fabric around the needle, if that makes sense. With the hand quilting on a frame, you really are manipulating the needle. Remember, we were going straight down and then we were rocking it. But with this style of quilting, you're manipulating the fabric itself around the needle. I'm holding my needle pretty steady. It's not moving too much. And it's the fabric that I'm moving around and kind of loading onto the needle. That is something that was kind of a eye opener for me in that it allows you to use the straightness of your needle. Oh, you can see I wasn't super straight, but the straightness of the needle to help guide your stitches. So I rarely do a lot of quilting lines when I am doing this style of stitching. One, because I'm okay if things are a little wonky, but two, the needle itself, you're guiding it on the straight part of the needle. So the needle itself is helping you keep those stitching lines straight-ish. I mean, it's not perfect. But it's hand quilting. It doesn't have to be perfect. One thing I do want to talk about is what happens when you get to one of your basting stitches on top of the quilt. And the thing is that when you're quilting it, you don't necessarily want to go like right over it because it's going to trap it or you don't want to go through it. You do want to kind of manipulate it around so that you're going under it or off to the side a little bit so it doesn't get quilted in basically. You want to make sure that it is separate from your quilting stitches. Otherwise taking it out at the end just gets a little bit of a nightmare. You may go through some of the, and actually let's see if I have, you may go through on the back side where the um, where those stitches are. When you're taking this out, you just wanna be really careful and cut kind of right next to it, like right over here. You can, once you have quilted, you can start removing them. I tend to leave them until I have quilted everything in one direction because then I know that it's not gonna shift anymore. I would do all of my lines in this direction and then I might take my basting stitches out, but most of the time I'll leave them till I'm completely done with the quilting before I would remove them. Removing them is really easy. You can just snip where the knot is and then just kind of uh, gently pull it out always paying attention to if you have any stitches that are caught underneath. And just take your time with it. And now I'm gonna end this exactly the same way as I did on the frame. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna go through the middle of the sandwich, come up, I'm gonna do a little knot. I'm just gonna do it two times though because I don't want it to be a huge knot. And then I'm gonna go back in that same spot. Again, move through the sandwich and then Hopefully, pop it in and it's gone. And there we are. Two different methods of hand quilting. We did the frameless and we did the hoop. They create different effects and different looks. The one thing to remember is that you, you want to pair the quilting style with what you have in mind for your quilt. Again, there's no right answer. It's really about what design, what effect you're going for. One of the things I love most about hand quilting is that it creates a little bit of a hoofier, I guess, texture. <laughs> a machine quilting will tend to create, because you have the bobbin thread and the top thread, it compresses it just a little more. With uh, hand quilting, you're gonna get that running stitch look that gives a little more texture and a little more volume to the quilt. One more thing that I wanted to mention is that I often use wool batting when I'm hand quilting. The needle tends to go through the wool extremely easy and it, it, it gives even more of that loft to the finished quilt. I hope you learned something. I hope you had fun. Hand quilting is a blast and I really think that everyone should give it a try. Thanks.